starts rolling. Hello, this is Rebecca Gilbert. Uh, and I'm here at Nazareth College where I'm with my student, Erica Marcucci, and she is a senior this year. Uh, her performance, or her degree is performance combined with music ed. And uh, Erica and I have been working together. This is the second year that we've been working together. She transferred here from Schenectady Community College. So um, Erica, I asked Erica, what she thought has been the most um, important or the you know the most helpful thing that we've worked on together since she's been here, and she said, uh, probably the scale work because the technique that we use with it and the different um, ways that you show me how to breathe and use my air, I've been able to transfer to all my music, and it's helped with like doing scales and. Um, stuff like within the pieces and make them more musical. Right. So we're going to do a little, I'm going to uh, just demonstrate what I uh, use as a, a technique regimen with my students here at Nazareth. Um, we decide, we're going to start with just a uh, major scale. It's going to be G major scale. And uh, we do it in three octaves. And I play with the uh, students because I just feel like it helps them. It's like having a practice partner, a training partner to be able to have this my sound to sort of support them as they go through the patterns. We we're gonna start uh, metronome at 60, we're gonna do different articulations. Um, it's three octave, meaning we start and our lowest note will be, well we start on, on the tonic and then we go down to our lowest note will be, in this one it's C, right? C, that's right. And then our highest note will be? B. Right, B, that's right. Okay, so we're gonna do it in 16th notes at 60. See how we do. Let's see if we re remember how it goes. <laughs> How's that G major scale go? Ready and go. Good. And then we'll do slur two tongue two. Ready and go. adjusting our intonation as we go. Then we're going to do single tongued, just single tongued. Ready and go. And then we'll do uh, ha ha. This is no tongue, so it's just breath puffs of air for each note. Ready and go. because we're changing, every time we play it, we change it up and it's a challenge to be able to keep the, the flow going in the fingers while adjusting things in the moment. And I feel this really helps deepen the, um, the learning uh, and it makes it easy to, as Erica was describing, translate it into repertoire later uh, because we've really, it's, it goes deeper into the body, mind, memory. Okay, so this is reverse double. Ready and go. Good. And then we will do speed work. So we're starting at 60 and now we're going to uh, change the tempo by increasing, you know, not a lot, just a little bit. And we'll do all slurred, same scale. Ready and go. Speed work, we just do slurred.
go, I know Erica can do this very well, so I'm going a little faster. What the goal is to get from, and I can do this in one session in about 10 minutes. I can take a scale from 60 all the way to 120. Um, and as I do it, I just try to gauge um, where the comfort, uh, where they're comfortable. If there's a, um, if there's a little fingering combination that's particularly troubling, then we'll do some breakdown work and just smooth that out and then reintegrate it and keep it going. Um, and so we'll just do a little more of that right now to show how that works. So this is now, we're moving up to, uh, this is 96 for now. Ready, uh, all slurred. Ready and breathe. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that when we do this in the slower tempo, we do a lot of voicing work. I forgot to mention that. So, uh, I just want to demonstrate a little bit what that looks like. With voicing, we would take each um, section, so and talk about how to clarify the sound as you move through the registers. So we start on G and play just the first group. Ready and go. Stop there. And there's a break point there where we, I would uh, refine. Is the, is the voice, uh, is the sound in the mouth in the middle or, in the, or forward? And as you start low, you have it sort of in the middle, but as you come up to the break, then you bring it forward, and we practice that. And then there's a different adjustment that happens as you go into the third octave. Let's do that. So this is starting on A, going up to the next group. Ready, and go. Okay, again. Ready, and go. That's right. Usually, uh, the high register notes are a little bit challenging. We do some breakdown work at the top. As we go into the top, we try to open more so the sound uh, is not tight and pushed or pinched in any way, which can be a really common thing for flutists. So we try to um, compensate for that when we're working on this uh, voicing and the scales. Um, so my technique regimen uh, goes, we do uh, minor scales and then we'll do um, arpeggios. And all of this I play with the students because I think it's just helpful to, it's like having a, a, a training partner. So the other thing we wanted to show you is a little bit of the uh, Dottio Sonatine. Uh, Erica's working on this for her senior recital. And so she's just gonna play like the first four lines of the opening and we'll, we'll do, I'll show you how we work on that. tempo so okay. that you can be really clear about making the um, intervals uh, so that you're voicing each note. In fact, I would do it like this. So that you don't move until you're really sure, okay, I'm going to voice the next note. I think okay. it, yeah, it's very valuable to go slowly. Start um, on the F. Okay. 
then we have the trill on the bottom, which is a is quite acrobatic because it's just your pinky, and the pinky isn't used to moving that fast. Okay, nicely done. Um, so let's just take this opening. Um, the you have a beautiful little register, which we already know, and then emerging out of that. of the D D so that you're when you come out of here that your D um, in the middle has the same um, resonance that you have in the low register that you're not pressing down on it okay that as you come up your your uh, pressure releases in the embouchure yeah just the D's together just or do the whole thing why don't you do it wrong <laughs> I can hear that the, it, the sound is sort of dull, and so one thing to do is just roll out a bit. very resistant note on the flute and so then you're moving to another very resistant note on that E natural, right? And all of this on, and the, on the break where it's very dense is meant to sound very floated and lifted. So again, keep the flute, um, Avoid pressing too much to get the clarity in the sound. Bring the air forward in your voicing inside your mouth, like ooh, like we've worked on in your scales. And then you can almost, almost just tip the flute out a little bit as you're playing through this measure. So just start it from here again, okay. and then play through this measure. So I'm going to hear all of your E's, your F's, and back to the E. Okay. Sounds much more, um, yeah, more floating, more um, like a dream, right? Yeah. yeah. And then come out of the dream. Right? You're, you're not sure what's happening. And then, oh, oh yeah, I remember what I was going to say. It's right here in the C. So one more time from, from here and all the way resolved to the C. Okay. So you change the color, now match your intonation, right? Okay. Right? So you have a little answer here in a different color, but matching the intonation. beautifully. Think about how the vibrato can help you match that. So there are two different expressions. A darker, deeper vibrato. A little more lifted vibrato, not yeah. as heavy, right? Try that. get into this is not quite as ag angular as you have later as you go into this measure that we practice slowly at the beginning when we started this but there is a sweep that happens in this rhythm and in this shape of the notes give more strength on this B so that you don't have to push the highest notes. That the high notes come sort of, they come sort of blossoming out of this B, which is the lowest note right before you go up. Okay, okay so. So you're gonna 
focus for strength here and strength here. Okay. Okay, let's hear you do that at one. That's great. Now you have so much strength. <laughs> that this, uh, you, you can actually, you probably noticed that. Because you were so strong here, you can actually play less here. Yeah, I noticed that. It yeah. sounded a little too much. <laughs> yeah, right. Because you, you have it there. It's available to you. So then we're just recalibrating a little bit. Okay, so one more time. Try it again. See if you can do that. Much better. Very good. Now, the whole thing is meant to be piano, un peu en dehors, which means a little bit in the distance. So, um, even the strength that you're showing here can be more in the vibrato, okay. meaning uh, you don't have to push a lot of air, but you, you have so much air, but you can sort of um, keep it calmer and more piano by just just adding more speed to the vibrato without playing more air. And that can be a kind of strength too. I want you to experiment a little bit with that and see how that makes it feel to you. Okay. even at the slower tempo too so yes. once it's faster that'll be an advantage <laughs> yeah, right exactly so then you have efficiency so that you know flute is one of, there's no other instrument the only one instrument that takes as much air as the flute and it's the tuba right so that so we are always looking for efficiencies so um, that's one thing that you can do a lot in this piece this is a you know from the French school so many different colors and the vibrato is what you're going to be able to use to bring out lots of color and also create variety without having to do you know um a lot of well let's let me, let me put it this way you're gonna be thinking of vibrato and color as a way of expressing dynamic okay so they are related um, and especially on, on the flute and especially in the French repertoire. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so I think we'll stop here for now and um, thank you for listening. Do you have anything to say? Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs>